Today we're going to take a quick look at Hunyan Image 3.0, which is a very recently released image generation model from Tencent. Now, this is quite interesting, and unfortunately for the time being, this is likely not something that we're going to be able to run locally. However, I am happy to report that we're going to be testing it today on a little web interface I've spun up through RunPod, so we will actually get some hands-on experience with this, and we will be able to play with it. Beyond that, this is quite an interesting model, and based off of some of the sample generation generations that they've chosen to include to advertise its performance, it does seem relatively performant as well. So with that, subscribe. And in addition to that, let's just take a quick look at some of the interesting technical specifications and other things of this model, and then we'll jump into some testing. Now, in terms of a few things that I'd like to just make notable mentions of before we jump into testing this, there are some key features here that they've chosen to mention. Unified multimodal architecture, so they mention this is a somewhat unique architecture and not specifically just a diffusion transformer architecture. There is some more scientific analysis of this that those interested could definitely go ahead and do, probably just by looking at the paper, which I do just want to make note that if you actually click on the report link right here, it is a broken link, but you can find the paper somewhere. I think maybe be through the GitHub or something of the sort. But beyond that, they say that this is the largest image generation MOE model. So it is a total size of 80 billion parameters with 13 billion active per token. Beyond that, they just kind of tout its superior performance in image generation. And kind of maybe going back to this point right here, they talk about it having, 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 intelligent world knowledge reasoning. The unified multimodal architecture endows Hunyan Image 3.0 with powerful reasoning capabilities, and it can leverage world knowledge and understand relationships between, like, or implied things between, like, text and what the image would then have. So if you said, like, a lonely astronaut, it may understand to put them in space and have them looking, like, lonely at, like, Earth, maybe, or something like that. Uh, I think that's kind of unscientific, but I do believe that's more or less proper. Further down, we see the somewhat high-end requirements that are currently needed to run this. I did see reports of folks, if they have the raw amount of memory that would be required for this, they said they were able to offload it, though it was extremely slow. I think someone said it would I don't remember, but I think it was like hours or days to generate on a CPU-only system with a ton of RAM. But currently, unfortunately, they recommend 480 gig GPUs to actually run this, which fortunately we are running it on, so uh, that is cool. Final thing to mention is the license is not like a standard license. They do have it right here. It is the Tencent Hunyan Community License, so anyone interested in that sort of stuff can go ahead and read through this, as it is just definitely important when working with open source or these types of models. So I've had ChatGPT go ahead and say, a prompt showing Steve's PC repair with prominently displayed signs for no Macs allowed and other anti-Mac things, and it's gone ahead and rewritten the prompt in the style of one of the sample prompts that was listed here. So I will go ahead and just paste this in. All right, we're getting much closer now to seeing our result, which I am personally quite excited for. I don't believe this will be funny, but I do just kind of want to test some proper and intricate prompts. Oh, very interesting. Okay, so again, and I'm going to have to download these to take a look at them properly because for some reason that button doesn't actually do anything, which would full screen them so we can just look at them using the image viewer application. All right, no Macs allowed, Mac free, Steve's PC repair. I don't know why the shop is so disheveled. Um, it didn't really necessarily, it really made it look like Steve's should have maybe some like a metal like drop downs here for when, oh, okay, it does have that for when the shop is closed to protect the actual inventory. All right, that, <laughs> that is actually there. Um, zooming in, things get a little more unhappy, but you can actually go ahead and right now the image size is set to auto. We could change those. Maybe I'll change it to 16 by 9 for some of the future generations, but um, the text is a little problematic. This did a good job. No Macs allowed. There is an apostrophe between Mac and S, but that's okay. The Apple logo is correct. Um, I will say it really captured the kind of disheveled and very garbage looking building that Steve's PC... <laughs> looks terrible. I mean, like, um, 
I mean the shop itself and like the building it's in look quite bad. If we were to, I suppose, focus on the sidewalk, you can usually see like stains and things like this on sidewalks if you're walking around cities. There are cracks, there's some cars over here in the corner. I will say, I noticed that like the distant elements don't look wonky at all. So this looks like a believable car and like the telephone wires or cable, power cables or whatever. Mac free, we fix zone. <laughs> Okay, and then you zoom in a little more and there's like some computer-esque things. There are actually like stains on the door, which is cool. This wood here does look, I mean, this is, okay, this is probably like too in-depth analysis, but I always have a tough time testing image models because all the things I want to test them with would just not work for this platform. But you can see that the wood is like rotted down here where it meets the ground. Um, all right, we'll see what happens here. And maybe I will then, here's an idea. So let's go ahead and just see how it does back to back on a garbage prompt like that. But we'll also test that same prompt, but enhanced in the style of one of their demo prompts through ChatGPT. And we'll do a side by side comparison of the difference in the actual generated result. All right, so we got our result here. And again, not bad. It is now properly in 16 by nine. I will say though, um, something I noticed here is all the individuals seem to look eerily similar. The actual, like some of the graphics on the clothing here and the actual folds or wrinkles in the clothing, how it would accurately drape on a human is actually not that bad. Let's go ahead and see. Now I'm kind of here looking for some like AI funkiness and things like that. The keyboard looks relatively lucid. I will say there is a PC right here. This individual is, I'm not quite sure, maybe staring at the screen next to them. Um, that would be out of focus. And it just kind of has like a techno, like cyberpunk vibe room look to it. I don't know if that would be an accurate way to describe what we're seeing. However, um, <laughs> I find it interesting to see. I'm not entirely sure what this little watermark on the bottom left is, but that is definitely something that pops out to one as uh, somewhat surprising. So basically what we're going to do now is go ahead and remove that and we'll put in now the enhanced prompt with the basic same kind of scene depicted in it and we'll see how that does comparatively to the very lackluster one sentence prompt I did. Oh wow. <laughs> okay, so that is a significantly better result. Wow. Okay, this is all right, let's take a peek at this. Wow, there is <laughs> there's a lot to take in here. It does look like a basement aesthetic. These PCs are perhaps not like 2007-ish. And again, one of the problems here is as I try to zoom in, it just goes poorly. And that is not the fault of the model. It's just trying to like pick out more elements here. Um, wow, you know, there's a lot that I'd like to say that I can't. So. Uh, just ignoring some of those things, I think we can notice that the actual, here's something to point out, the desktops along with like the actual icons are correctly placed. So this is really kind of like where you would see the icons on what you would assume to be this individual's gaming computer or something like that. There are many energy drinks, bags of chips. The floor is quite dirty with like paper strewn about. I will, okay, that is quite terrifying, but I will say overall, there is so much included in this image. Just, it's very visually um, dense. Um, some ceiling tiles are missing. The lights are there. There's some smoke over here. Um, yeah, all right. So something I will say that's perhaps a downside is this individual's face is more or less like normal. Um, Beyond that, every other face I see in here is perhaps the something that would come from like a horrific nightmare. But other than that, you know, we got some RGB, some energy drinks. There is a small mouse pad here. Um, maybe that's a, a box for discarded uh, tissues. And then, yeah, so this is, all right, let's, let's just compare this side by side with the previous single. Interesting. So... I got to be honest with you, based on these two results, I mean, the amount of effort that went into actually making the prompt for this versus the one sentence prompt for this, this is more stale and AI. This is more lifelike, but crap, uh, excuse me. I mean, more lifelike, but uh, perhaps less clean. So interesting comparison. So while 
hopefully funny as well. This one is actually going to really test the capabilities of this because we're basically having it generate a photo of a VHS tape in its box just sitting on a table. Of course, the VHS tape is for the movie agent Poop Man, and we're going to basically see how well it is capable of doing this. So this is a multifaceted test where not only does it have to really properly make that movie art for the VHS tape, box. It needs to also put the box properly on a table. The angles and lighting and everything needs to be right. So this is going to be a fairly difficult test to do accurately. All right, we should get this result in a second. Now that, <laughs> that is well done. I don't know about you, but when I think of Agent Poop Man, this is the cover art that comes to mind. So, all right. All right, this is definitely an example of the intricate prompt having a very, very significant effect on the generated result. Here we have our VHS cover. Agent Poop Man, <laughs> he's holding um, a device. Um, he's wearing knee pads. <laughs> we have like some interesting, the text on the side here is also proper. The table, I mean, look, this is something that's actually quite impressive. Let's for a second ignore the hilarity of this. The actual edges of this box are in line with what you would see now with like a VHS tape where the cardboard frays and gets worn out at the end and loses its coloring. This is really, I have to say, <laughs> I'm going to start like making weird VHS box art like this and selling it on Etsy so people can fool their friends and family. Um, besides that, all right, we have a rated R, of course, and we have our logo for Agent Poop Man. And then we have Agent Poop Man himself. And the city behind him is a blaze, so we would assume him to be the protagonist, but I suppose anything is really quite possible here. So sadly, though, it didn't really get like the subtext or what you would expect here to be done but overall this was that was a solid solid result <laughs> all right we're trying it now i've just written bijambo in youtube channel and we, <laughs> we see what it comes up with what the <laughs> no imagine but this is what actually happened probably have more subscribers if that was the case all right we're now trying it with a like realistic looking Polaroid with writing on the bottom of it, which for some reason seems to have become like very popular in pop culture. But the two individuals in the photo are um, perhaps on opposite ends of the aesthetically pleasing spectrum. So we'll see what happens here. <laughs> All right, that, <laughs> that did, you know, I mean, the text is in, in smudged black marker. I don't know that I would really <laughs> refer to that as that. But I will say that, like, the corner of the Polaroid here almost looks like it's reflecting light, how one would in real life if you were to hold it. The background here is definitely interesting. Um, <laughs> this is overall a very, um, yeah, yeah, all right. All right, I think the last serious thing I'm going to test is just a cinematic close-up portrait of a person. Basically, this is just designed to get it to generate a really impressive-looking portrait of a person. All right, I mean, yeah, I guess that's decent. Again, I don't really, like, when judging image models, I'm not very good at, like, to me, this looks fine. The clothing is draped properly. The stray strands of hair do kind of go. The room is perhaps concerning, but, you know... This is overall an acceptable result. All right, for the last test, I've just put in something kind of random saying James Bond, but he is a Lego set. So ideally, we will get some form of Lego James Bond, and then that will probably wrap up the on-camera testing portion of this video. All right, <laughs> that's not bad. I feel like those hands are more like, what was like the bunk Legos, like Mega Vlocks or something like that. Overall, this is actually, <laughs> it's actually quite decent. I will say, this is more impressive than I expected. The actual reflection of the light upon where it would be on an actual Lego, 
basically what I'm trying to say is this does look very plastic based on how this light is reflecting off of it. The hands are a little off and I think these legs are far too short for a normal Lego but other than that the way that the suit would actually be painted on a Lego is is spot on as well as the actual facial features. This is actually fairly good at Lego stuff so that's actually kind of, all right we'll, we'll do one more Lego thing because I feel like we're all curious now. What would be a cool I don't know why, but I just said a Lego set of a Walmart. I figure there will be a bunch of different elements in there that will need to be made of Legos, and then we'll be able to see some cool things based off of our Lego James Bond. All right. I Again, I didn't really know what to expect here, but I will say that the proportions are more accurate here definitely than, than our James Bond up there. The things on the shelves are actually Lego. All right, we're going to download this one and take a more intricate look at it as... The actual shelf items are also Lego, even like the caps on these bottles and things like that. The depth of field is very focused on this individual. The hair is almost kind of Minecraft looking. Um, we see this. All right, overall, this is actually not bad. And I think I want to try one final thing, which will just be a collage of historically significant events, but in Legos. Okay, I'm not entirely sure what was to be expected here, but... It basically just put a bunch of Lego minifigures holding, I think, weapons. So overall, that was perhaps less exciting than I had anticipated. But overall, that's going to conclude um, our testing of this video. Or of our testing of this, our video testing this image model is going to be concluded now. I will say it is very good at doing Legos. Overall, I'm not very good at kind of trying to quantify the results I see when testing image models. Obviously, I like to test them with my own prompts and things like that. It very well could generate images like this quality and things of that sort. And it is. I think relatively open source, obviously, I want to reiterate the custom license. And beyond that, it is just kind of architecturally a bit interesting being an MOE and things of that sort. So overall, I think in the ultimate likelihood that this kind of becomes something that is a bit easier to run locally, it will be a very prudent option for those interested in image generation and things of that sort. And I figured I would just go ahead and kind of throw it up on RunPod and play with it as it would be kind of fun. So with that, that's going to conclude the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to subscribe and then leave them. And then, yeah, thanks for watching.